first of all, I need everybody to log into Blackboard. What is Blackboard Mako or something like that? Okay. This is the new. I'm sorry? Oh, it's not Mako? Mako Nova. That oh, yeah, they changed the, the Blackboard to Service Pack 9 or something like that. I don't know. It's totally irrelevant to me because they still have the same limitations. I need 200 meg at least 200 megabytes every Wednesday night to publish my video lectures. They can't provide that for me. So, I'm sorry, I have to host my own. So I'm going to be using Moodle, and that's what Winter Where is it? Winter Where is it? This one, right? Winter. That's what my announcement says on Blackboard. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm going to be using Moodle. This is the address. Oh, yeah. It has to be on a separate one. That's right. So never mind. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so here it is. Distributed data processing. When you come up to home, well, as soon as you log in, and and I believe everybody has already logged in, so I I'm not going to go through the password convention or whatever. Uh, you guys already have been able to log in. <clears throat> Um, what I was saying is, I need you to contact me through Moodle course messages. It's an instant messenger. If I'm online, I'll get a message immediately. Can somebody send me a message, please? So I can show you what I'm talking about. Any of you guys present here, send me a message. So I come into my office, I log in, I'm logged in almost 24-7, okay? Because I'm online all the time. You did send me a message? Okay. So, I'm online. Here it is, new message from Ivano Machet. Go to messages. I go to messages. tells me. This guy sent me a message. I can see all my unread messages. And all, all this stuff you can do as well. Plus, there's a history of our conversations. And I'm going to keep this private because it's from one of the students. You just sent me a test. Ivano. Good. So I can see the immediate message or I can see the history of messages with the student. It's the best way to communicate with me. If I'm not online, which is rare, then I'll be getting an email with the course name and number and your name and the subject. So I can immediately see it among the hundreds of emails that I get every day. Anyway, so that's the best way to communicate with me. Um, I will assume that you already know any Windows operating system or Apple or S10 or Linux, Ubuntu, whatever. I'm going to be using Firefox, but you guys can use whatever you want. I know in web applications there's always a difference between this, a small difference between IE Firefox and Chrome. I will be testing your stuff in Firefox. So if you can develop it in Firefox, the better. You have to have basic knowledge of MySQL databases. 
That means at least know how to create a database, tables, keys, foreign keys, and do a little bit complex queries. That means doing selecting and joining and doing all that stuff. <coughs> the book. I do not require you to get a textbook. I am providing an electronic copy of the textbook. In fact, I am providing electronic copies of several textbooks that you might need to read. You want to get a paper copy? Go ahead and get a paper copy if you want. You can find it really cheap on Amazon. And I need you to read the syllabus, especially the course requirement and policy section, and send me an email. Yes, not a text message. An email confirming that you have read and agreed to these terms. I think most of you have done already that. That's it. Okay? There's no quizzes, there's no midterms, there's no finals. It's going to be a project. So you guys are going to be de delivering several milestones of this project. <coughs> it will include, on Moodle, it will include also the um, wiki. In previous semesters, we had to go to an external tool to work with wiki. That's when I was doing Blackboard and an external wiki. But now we're using everything in Moodle. So there is, under the global section of the distributed data processing Moodle course, there's going to be a wiki for web project specifications. I need you to send me <coughs> a text message telling me what's the theme of your web application. What would you like to build? What kind of application, web application would you like to build? Okay. So once I get that instant message and I approve it, then you can start working on the wiki. Which means you have to fill out all these six sections of the wiki. I have already done three out of the six. They are the problem statement, which is one, one paragraph explaining at a 5,000 mile level the problem and how you're going to solve it. Okay? And I need you to highlight the important nouns. So really think about what you said you're trying to solve. What kind of problem you're trying to solve? Okay? Just to give you an example, this is the one that I'm going to be building. This is the online timesheet system. We need to build an online timesheet system. Our employees currently submit their weekly hours worked using a paper-based timesheet system. That is manually intensive and error-prone. We require an automated solution for submitting employees work, employee hours worked in the form of an electronic timesheet approving them and paying for the time worked. In addition, we would like to have automatic notifications of timesheet status changes and a weekly reminder to submit and approve employee timesheets. Is this set in stone? No. In fact, this is something that I want you to get accustomed to. In the real world, specifications change. In fact, they, they, change, they tend to change more than what you like. Is this going to be set in stone? No. The problem statement you will see, it will get changed throughout the semester. It will be adding some things and it will be changing other requirements, other goals. Okay? So that is going to affect the second page, which are the functional requirements. These are the 10 things that I expect you to implement in your project by the end of this course. Your final project should have these 10 fully functional requirements working. And I'm, go I'm going to be working with you throughout the semester building them. Hourly employees should be able to sign in or sign out for the web application. I mean, you can read it on your own later on. Just like I have built this wiki, once I approve your theme, I need you to build your wiki. So. Instead of Alvaro Escobar's wiki, I can go to any one of you guys' wikis. And I can read yours. And I can comment on it. 
So I need you to be looking every week over your wiki, over my comments, and incorporate whatever you need to modify or whatever, change. Okay? Later on, you guys are going to have to build the domain model. <coughs> I don't have it, but it's basically a UML diagram of the domain model of the project, etc. Also, on the main page, I need you to, the nouns that you highlighted from the problem statement, I need you to list them. You know what? I forgot to highlight my main. I'm going to have to do that. I, for, I forgot to highlight the main entities. I'm sorry, the nouns in my problem statement. Those are the main entities. They're going to become the main entities in your system. Those are the ones that you're going to have to play with in Java. So my main entities are going to be timesheet, employee, department, time, status, etc., etc., etc. Any questions so far? Okay. I also want you to, that is if you need to, use the news forum. News forum is a media that you can use to post some kind of question. Hey, I'm having problems installing my SQL. This is what the error message that I get. Maybe another student ran through the same problem and has, has a solution. Maybe I know what you're talking about and I can post a solution and everybody can benefit from it. So I need you guys to make use of these. You want to you want a new discussion that has that's nothing to do with MySQL or Eclipse or whatever? Make up your own. Okay? Open a new forum, a new a new topic, post something some kind of question that you're having problems with, and we can all share from the experience. Okay? Textbooks. So far, these are the two textbooks that I'm going to be using. This is the official course textbook. It's called Agile Java Development with Spring Hibernate and Eclipse. I think I share with you guys the PDF format of it. Okay? We'll, we will be actually using his code, the author's code and we'll be going through the exact same installations and everything that he went through all the tools now our tools are going to be a little bit more modern with latest versions than his tools because his book is from 2006 that was seven years ago believe it or not seven years ago from seven years ago to now the frameworks have gone through several revisions the tools have gone through several versions and revisions, so um, we're going to be using much more modern tools. Beginning Java server pages, I need you to be very fluent in Java server pages because that's going to be the technology that we're going to be using on the front end. Those of you that had me on CSIS 3020, you guys know that when you combine HTML pages with a server-side scripting language like PHP or Ruby on Rails or any one of those uh, server-side scripting, it changes, it makes uh, the ability to uh, create dynamic websites. Java server pages is exactly that. Java server pages is nothing else than an HTML page that has Java server-side scripting in it. So I need to be fluent on that. That book that I'm sharing with you guys will tell you everything you need to know how to produce and use Java server pages. The software, this is the textbook source code. This is the source code so that you guys don't have to type everything that is in the book. It's right there. Now, this version 
I have modified a little bit from the original one provided by the author. I have adapted it to use my SQL database instead of the original hypersonic database. The author uses um, uh, what is it called? A small footprint embedded database. Sort of like SQLite. You guys familiar with SQLite? SQLite is an embedded database. It's very quick to use. You can put it inside an application and the application can use it without being external to any uh, to any server. But this is a distributed data processing course, so we're going to have to be able to do an application that deals with external servers, like a database server, like a web server, like a mail server, etc., etc. Any questions so far? Now, I have also published the video lectures from last year, two of them. And I will be publishing the one that I'm recording right now. Okay? Now, last year on these video lectures, I developed this JSP connecting to a database sample. I need you guys to download it, import it into Eclipse, and run it. Make sure that you can run it. Okay? These video lectures go through the process of where to find Eclipse, how to download it, how to install it, everything. How to go and find MySQL database server, how to download it, how to install it. All the plugins that you need from Eclipse, they're there in the video lectures. Okay? Um, I also go through the process of downloading the project and importing it into Eclipse and running it in Tomcat. Oh, Tomcat. I also go through the process of going finding Tomcat, downloading it and installing it. It's all here in the in the video lectures. Okay? Which version of Eclipse? Uh you can use whatever version you want. My suggestion is <coughs> use I'm using Indigo. J2EE version. I know this is not the latest one. I think the latest one is called Juno. Juno, J, something like that. That's fine. That one is over. It's fine too. I'm using Indigo. It's, this, it's the one that I used last year. Every year or every six months, a new version comes out. <laughs> uh, I'm using oh, Java. You have to have the Java. Software Development Kit, the SDK, not the JRE, which is the runtime environment, but the SDK, the Software Development Kit. The Software Development Kit contains the JRE plus a bunch of other stuff, like the compiler, um, a whole bunch of other utilities. So the video lectures also go through the process of telling you where to find it, how to download it. Well a little bit different because back then was then Java part of Oracle? I'm not sure. Nowadays Java is part of Oracle so Oracle wants you to sign and register with them in order to download this free available open source uh, code. While when it was Sun Microsystems, it was freely available. You didn't have to sign or register or whatnot. Uh, I am, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. For those of you who don't want to have to jump around, this is what I'm going to do. Under software, I'm going to upload my entire clips. I'm going to put it there. I'm going to upload the Java that I'm using. I'm going to upload the MySQL that I'm using, the MySQL server. Okay, All this stuff that I used, I never download the installer. I always download a zip that I can unzip and control when it starts, when it stops, everything. 
Okay, I don't like this automatic stuff that you saw how I my bar here is getting full of stuff that automatically runs and I hate that because every time that you install something they want to do it automatically so my boots are like five minutes on Windows um, <coughs> I don't like that I try to avoid that so all my software is going to be some zip that you unzip on your C drive root directory and run it from there okay so for instance just to give you an example this is my C drive I have Eclipse I have several versions of Eclipse as you can see I have Ex Eclipse Spring this is the Juno J2E version right plus and I'm going to show you guys a little bit later on it has some extra plugins Spring plugins and we're going to we're going to go through that. Uh, my sequel, my sequel. This is the my sequel I use. My sequel five five sixteen win thirty two. That's the other thing. I'm using Windows XP, which is a thirty two bit version, of, uh, a thirty two bit uh, operating system. If you guys use Windows seven, which is a six most probably is a sixty four bit operating system, then you need to get everything sixty four bit. Or you can install a 32 bit, it's backward compatible, but you make sure that all the different parts are 32 bits because you cannot mix and match 32 with 64 on the same machine. Obviously, if you're going to install it on different servers, it will work, but guess what? our development environment is going to be on one machine. <laughs> so, our distributed system is going to be on one machine. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so I this is my this is my SQL 516. It's 32 bit version. Uh, what else? My Apache, my Tomcat. I'm sorry, Tomcat is going to be 60.35. They're all off the C drive, as you can see. Okay, so it's Tomcat. My SQL. Uh, Eclipse, and then this is my workspace, Rapid Java. I'm going to be calling it Rapid Java. Okay, you can call it whatever you want, but it's also off of my D drive. And I'm going to put it up here, so if you guys want to use exactly the same version that I'm using, you're welcome to download. I will do that this evening, so you guys can download it. So for next week, you guys already have homework, and the homework is to modify the ASP that I'm sharing with you guys, so you're forced to download it, import it into Eclipse, and make sure that it runs. You have to modify the JSP I'm providing you to go and query a different table. Okay. So this file contains the first Eclipse project example using JSP connecting to a database. So I go in the video and explain exactly what's a JSP, how to connect to a database with JSP, and all the different parts I need. This is like picking up from what we left back in 3020 using PHP. If you guys remember, for those of you who take 3020, it was an HTML page and we will put aside PHP server-side scripting that will use a database connector, you will use a result set, it will use all this stuff and just display the data that was queried from the database, just display it on the page. Very similar. Except that it's done in Java. So here it is. This is my SQL. I'm sorry, this is my Eclipse. And I'm going to be showing you guys, hopefully it works. <coughs> Let me 
me show you guys the end result of the project that I'm going to be building throughout the semester. So, where's the server? Server, here's the server. It's a Tomcat server. I have this project deployed. I'm going to remove it. And I'm going to start the server. There it is. The server started. Let's make sure we can hit it. It's local host. Eighty eighty. Nope. What happened? Yep, it's listening to port eighty eighty. It's up and running. What's up with that? Oh. Of course, there's nothing. <laughs> There's nothing deployed. So now let's deploy it into the server. Right now there's nothing to deploy. It. So let's de deploy the Timex web that I'm going to be developing throughout the semester into the server. So right now I think it's taking the project, compiling it, packaging, and deploying it into the server. It's a lot of chugging. That's it. So, let's close that. And now, let's do Timex Web. That's the name of the project. Here it is. Okay. So I'm going to log in. Remember, your, your projects, you're going to have several types of users. So you're going to have like a hierarchy of users. And you, it's up to you what kind of users. Uh, it could be up to only two roles or up to ten roles. I don't care. So in this case, Timex contains, I believe it's four or five different types of users. There's the hourly employee, there's the manager, there's the executive, there's the administrator, and there's human resources. So I'm going to log in as an hourly employee. And it didn't work. That's not good. Why didn't it work? Because... Can anybody tell me why it didn't work? Look at this. Look at all these exceptions. Why didn't it work? And this is something that you guys have to get used to it, reading at the console. You guys already figured out why? Cannot connect to the cannot open a connection to the database. Yes, got right. My database is not up and running. So I go to that my SQL Win32 bin and then I run the daemon. 
my SQL daemon. Now the database is up and running. So I'm going to try it again. I'm going to clear the console. Yeah, didn't work. A known column employee code. Oh, I don't think this is the right database. So, fortunately, always, always in the project, make sure that you append in the project a backup of your database. So I can install it. Same database that is working on your end. You make a backup and share it with me on your project so that I can make it work as well. So this is the database that should... No, that's not the database. This is the database backup that should make it work. I'm also going to share with you guys the MySQL Query Browser, which is a GUI tool that I use, I frequently use to connect in it with a graphical user interface against MySQL database. This is it. So I'm going to get rid of that uh, timing X database. And I am going to recreate the database. I just ran my entire script, which is the backup. And now, woo! I didn't like that. How are we doing with memory? I think it's complaining about memory. How can that be, man? Can you be complaining about memory? You have two gigs. Oh, it's 2.24 gigs. Wow. Eclipse is getting fatter and fatter every year. Okay. Let's clear the console. The database is up and running. The correct version of the database is up and running. So I'm going to try again. Yes. It worked. So I just logged in as Mike Dover, one of the employees. And these are his timesheets. Some of them are approved, some of them are pending. If they're approved, he can take a look at them, but cannot modify them. If they are pending, he can take a look at them and modify them. Add, delete, whatever. Okay and save until he's ready to submit it. When he submitted, his boss gets an email that he just submitted the, the timesheet, okay? And the status becomes submitted. So Mike Dover just submitted the timesheet from February 26, 2012 for 24 hours. So if I sign out, and now I sign in as Mike Dover's boss, which is employee ID number three, Teresa Walker, she can take a look at the staff hours report and approve timesheets. So she's going to see that Mike Dover has a timesheet from 226 2012 just submitted and she can approve it or not if she approves it and sends it Mike Dover gets an email saying your boss approved your timesheet it will be paid if she does not approve it Mike Dover will get an email saying it was rejected you have to modify it 
when you sign out and come back in as Mike Dover, you will see that it's being approved. He cannot modify it anymore. Okay? He can also register. Well, it doesn't make sense because he's already registered. Um, I don't know why it's not working. You should be able to register as a new employee, create an account, name, address, employee ID, create your own password, etc. Um, if you are the executive, you can log in and you can see your timesheets. I don't know why it's coming up like that. That's weird. Hey, wait a minute. Okay, so if you are the executive, then you can also see an overall summary, which is a report of all the timesheets of all the hours from all the employees in the company, starting from the managers all the way down. How many have been paid, how many have been unpaid, approved, disapproved, etc. Only a few users have access to this type of report. So I, I need you to understand, and this is the type of project that I need you to build. The users will have several roles, and depending on the roles, they have different access to different content in the web app. So when you think about your theme, this is exactly what I want you to think about. Something similar. And depending on several things that happens in the web app, several emails will get triggered. Okay? Also, there is a section which doesn't have a front end. There's a section in the app, in the web app, that doesn't have a front end. It's actually a daemon or a service running saying, hey, is it Friday 5 p.m.? No, not yet. Is it Friday 5 p.m.? No, not yet. When it's Friday 5 p.m., it goes into the database and looks at all the employees that have not created the timesheet and submitted it yet. And guess what? It creates an email and sends an email reminding them that they have to provide their timesheet and submit it before 5 p.m. Friday. So that's something that it's automatic. It's some kind of process that gets scheduled to run at a certain uh, at a certain period in time, and 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 we'll do something. So think about that kind of stuff also. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys <coughs> just to end early tonight. I'm gonna show you guys a couple of projects that got turned in last year if I have them man I think this is one of them uh, let's let's see Let's remove Timex Web from the server. So I'm undeploying this guy so I no longer works. Good. And then I'm going to deploy real estate. What happened there? Yep, yeah, does not exist. I know. Come on. Okay. 
I deployed. It's running now. All right. Oh, the database. This is the database. Let's see if I have it in. Yep, real estate. I have it. Okay. So I should be able to run it. Here it is. So if I log in, I should be able to see the property listings. This is a real estate website. So I should be able to see the property listings. I should be able to see details of each property. Okay. If I'm interested in buying, then I should be able to do a search. I'm looking for a townhouse in the price range of two hundred a hundred thousand and two hundred and fifty thousand square footage and anywhere between five hundred and thirty five hundred the location can be in any one of these okay whoa why is it that's weird it's repeating and then the bed bedrooms and bathrooms and then do a search and it will come up with whatever real estate that matches that search. Or you can take a look at past searches and you will save all the past searches. So I can take a look at the search for a 4-4 in Cayman an Island, an apartment, 15, up to 1,500 square feet and up to 155,000. This is what he came up with. These are the details of the property. You can also leave some feedback. You can see the feedback from other people that um, uh, saw the property. And once you register and log in, you can leave your own. Okay, so you can post a comment on Now, that comment will not be available until the admin goes and approves. Oh, yeah, that's an acceptable comment and then accepts it. Then it becomes available for that property. Or, or not hidden, but, you know, displayed. Or you can reject, as an admin, you can reject it. There are several users, like this is the admin and this is a regular, these are regular uh, roles, sellers, buyers, whatever. The way I would have done it is I would have done buyers and sellers, two separate roles, because they should be separate. And then the admin, a third role. Anyway, but this is one of the projects that um, got a really good grade because he really understood, you know, the concepts of the roles. And right here in this project, he fulfilled the 10 functional requirements needed uh, and to implement them in, in the project. Um, and it has a nice look and feel. I mean, it has. It looks a very. It looks very professional. Now, if you guys 
have seen 3020 already with, with me, then you know how to do this. If you have not taken 3020, which means you do not know anything about web programming, uh, HTML, cascading style sheets, and JavaScript, then I suggest you um, you seek some help. <laughs> um, all I can say is all these styles and looks and fields are available. There are many of them for free online, so you can use them. I'm not asking you to reinvent the wheel and create your own. You can use many or one of the many um, look and fields that are there. You can go to templates, uh, open source templates.org. You can go to many different places where you can find cascading style sheets and JavaScript that, that that do this. But unfortunately that's not going to be something that I will be covering because it's out of scope for this class. That's 3020, Web Programming and Design. Anyway, so that's it. That's one of the projects that I have. Let me see if I have another project to show. Let me remove that one from the server. Uh, by the way, this is the same process that I go through when I grade your stuff. You know, I download, you submit it, I unzip it, I put it, I import it into my um, workspace, and then run it, run the database. Uh, we're still recording. Yeah, we're still recording. Uh, student Cloud. I think this is one of them. I'm not sure. Hmm. <coughs> I'm not sure if this is one of them. Yeah, I think this is one of them. Let me see. Okay, let's let's try deploying it. Onto the server. And then let's take a look at the it's probably this database. So, student cloud. These are students. These are users. Okay. Student in cloud, I believe, is a web project created by one of the students that tries to manage homeworks in a high school. So you have students, you have parents that want to know how their, their children are doing in, in high school. Uh, and then there's teachers that grade stuff and post assignments. So as a student, you can go there, look at your assignments, and submit them. As a parent, you can go there and watch over how your children are doing with their assignments and their grades. And as a teacher, you can go in and sign in and grade stuff and take a look at the assignments that were submitted by the students and sign a grade. I think that's basically what what, what it is in a high level. Um, yeah. Okay, so let me see. Let's use our 
Firefox browser. Uh, these are from distributed data processing. How do I know? They are built using Java, which you guys are going to have to do. And they are built using Spring, Hibernate, and MySQL. Let's log in as a student first. Alley 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right. Here I am. So I can see my report card. E, that didn't look good. My attendance report. That didn't look good. What's going on? I'm not sure if I have the right version of the database, unfortunately. see a backup. Uh-oh, that's not good. Let me try somebody else. Let me try a parent. So... Jeff Lee is probably the father of Ali Lee, so let's see if I can get this guy. Jeff123. Okay, so I'm logging as a report card. Yeah, I can see the report card. As a parent, I can see the report card of my kid, Ali Lee. These are the subject and assignments. This is when they were due. This is when they were submitted. The status is whether it's pending, graded, submitted, and this is the grade. Okay? And I can print it. I can also see the attendance report from my kid. So I can see the week ending in this, present, present, or absent. I'm not sure if it has a late lateness. So it has a total absent and total present in the overall. Okay? So that's as far as I can do as a parent. If I log in as a teacher, Ashley21. I see other type of content, right? I can enter grades. So these are the assignments. This is their due date. And I can click here and enter the grades. And I can do comments. If you think about it, this is like a mini Blackboard. Really awesome project. And you will see it's just 10 fully functional requirements implemented. But it, depending on the type of user, you get different content. That's the idea. You can enter attendance, because remember, you are the teacher. So you can enter attendance for your students, and only your students. These are not the only students in the database, but these are uh, who is this guy? Ashley Davis students. Okay. And then you can view the grades in attendance you can, by student. So you can actually see 
the attendance of Ali. This is the same attendance report that the parent, Jeff, saw of his kid. Okay? So we're going to be able to structure our web app in, in such a way that we just provide services. We just provide like a functional service. And depending on who you're coming from, you provide that information or not. And this is the same grades report that Ali's father saw. But the teacher also has the ability to see it. And then finally, the, stu the uh, teacher can create an assignment, obviously. Right. So, does that give you like a fairly good idea what type of project I'm looking for? Now, when the teacher creates an assignment, the students get an email saying, "Hey, there's a new assignment. It's due to such and such date, and this is what you have to do." When the teacher grades the assignment, both the student and the parent get an email. This is the grade of your assignment. Okay, When there's an assignment coming up that the student has not submitted, and this is a process that runs, is a scheduling that runs behind the scenes, that has no user interface to it, goes through the assignments. There's, oh, there's one coming up to tomorrow. So the students get an email. If they haven't submitted it yet, they get an email saying, remember, there's this an assignment due such and such date. Anyway, so that's the idea. Pretty good projects, I th believe. I have more of them, but some of them are old. I don't know if I have all the database. Uh, Track Scout Ultimate. I think this is the last one that I have. Let's see if this one works. I'm going to remove that one and uh, man, I don't have a database from this guy either. Hopefully I will have the database in here. Ultimate. Yeah, this is probably it. Let's see if it works. We're going to compile it, package it, and deploy it into Tomcat. It's running now. Student Cloud? No. Okay, here it is. The Ultimate Frisbee Championship. I don't know if you guys have heard of this sport or not. So this guy created the Intercollegiate Ultimate Frisbee Championship. Basically, there's players that register as part of a team, and then there's a schedule of games between teams, also called a tournament, and there are several tournaments going on at the same time. And you can register, and you can you can register online and register into any team. And then you will have to go to the game. I think there's a maximum of five members per team or something like that. And then you can take a look at the standings of different tournaments. So there's the, 12, 200, the 2012 National Championship and there's the Epic Tournament, two different tournaments. 
and you can take a look at the standings I think that's what we're looking at right now the standings this is ranking team number one score games won games lost percentage blah 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 all that stuff you can take a look at the different teams Oh, here it is. Look at this. This is pretty cool. I just hove over it, the show, and it tells me who are the members of that team. This is the owls. This is the elephants. And I can take a look at the games. So, this day... It's the Sharks versus the Owls. The location is to be announced. No notes on it. it hasn't happened yet, I guess. <laughs> or at least the score has not been input yet. Now, if you log in as the admin, then you, or as the coach, or as the ref, you can actually go and enter the scores of that game. But if you are just a player, obviously, when you log in as a player, you won't be able to do that. You will be able to do other stuff. <laughs> okay. So let's... So this is public stuff, right? You don't need to be logged in to view it. So let's log in. So I guess he has just two levels of users, the admin and the players. So let's log in as the admin. Admin one, two, three, four, five. Very easy. Sign in. There you go. So now as an admin, you can actually edit the score for this game, which was supposed to happen in March 20th last year. So now, as an admin, you can say, okay, okay, this game was reported, okay, this was a 5 to 1. And it was an awesome game. You can save it. So now, that's what it shows. And everybody can see that. Now, since the Sharks won over the Alls, then they're up in the standings. So if you go, you can take a look at now they have three games won not two. Got it? It's pretty pretty good stuff. The team, you can edit the team as an admin. You can create a new team or you can edit the team. Where is it from, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. You can delete the team. Now, as a player, if you're not registered, you can register as a player, right? So you're creating your own account here. But I'm not going to create a new account. I'm going to use any one of these players. So I'm going to log in. Now, obviously, I'm not an admin, so I cannot modify any of this stuff. But... I can say, hey, only show my games. So it's going to show just the schedule of games where I am, where my team plays. And these are all the teams. And you can enroll or unenroll. So right now, I am part of the Sharks team. I can unenroll from that team if I want to. 
or I can enroll in a different team in a different tournament. Notice that I cannot enroll in a different team in the same tournament. That would be a conflict of interest. <laughs> Show only my teams. So it only shows the teams that I belong to. Does this give you an ex a good example of what I'm looking for? All right. Are there any questions? Yes, this was real. This is all that is happening be behind the scenes. And believe it or not, if you use a framework, you don't have to write any of this stuff. Write any of this stuff. You're using the framework. This is actually Hibernate behind the scenes. Hibernate is doing all this stuff. So, yes, it looks like it's a lot of work, but guess what? You're not going to do it from scratch. You're going to be leveraging a lot of functionality that is given to you in Java code through Spring and Hibernate frameworks. We're going to get to know it. We're going to get to know how to use it. I'm going to show you an example through my timesheet, Timex project, and you guys have to apply it to your project. If you graduate with knowledge of these frameworks, you're going to be very, very markable. Because this is what is required today out there in the workforce when you want to develop a system. Okay? Any questions? Now, to get up to this level, we're going to have to start from really bottom almost zero knowledge. What is a servlet? What is a Java server page? All the stuff that I'm going to be covering the first three or four weeks. In the meantime, while I'm covering all this stuff, you guys have to start working on your requirements, your wiki. I'm going to be putting feedback on that. And then we're going to have some kind of requirements set by the fourth or fifth week. That's when you guys are going to start building your database and start building the very bare bones of your project, which means using Hibernate, a little bit of the database that you're using, using Hibernate to just do very simple queries. That's all you're going to be doing. And then from the sixth week till the 16th week, you guys are going to be implementing one functional requirement per week. That's the velocity that I want you to turn in things. Sometime in week 10, 11, it's going to be the first milestone. It's going to be a working project with two or three functional requirements working. And sometime in the week 13 or 14, you're going to be turning into the second milestone. It's about six or seven functional requirements working. And then the 17th week, on finals week, you guys are going to be turning in your final project with 10 fully functional requirements working. That's what makes up the grade. You see the syllabus? It will be homeworks, milestone one, milestone two, final project. End of story. Got it? All right. Just recently, the dean went through the definition of a credit hour with us, all faculty. And he asked that we tell you what it means. And I don't know if you guys already know this or not. One credit hour means that we're going to have one hour classroom session. By the way, this is a four credit course. So we have to have four hours. I'm going to try to cut it at three. <laughs> okay? But we're supposed to have four hours classroom time 
For each hour classroom time, you have to have two additional hours to review the material that was covered in that one hour. So for four hour credit, that means you have to have eight hours in the week for you to review the stuff that was covered. In addition to that, there is an additional duplicate amount of time, which means an additional of eight hours a week for you guys to work on homework and assignments for that subject. So you have to dedicate to this class 16 hours a week in addition to classroom time. If you're working, if you have 18 credits this semester, please review your workload because there's going to be a lot of work. You will need the 16 hours plus classroom time to work on this course. Is that clear? All right. That being said, are there any questions? So we will meet every Wednesday here, right? Six o'clock. I'll record the video lecture and I'll post it on Moodle. And I will also share a few video lectures that are essential, that I don't want to repeat stuff from last year. Given that, all you need to do this week is send me an instant messenger. I'm sorry, yeah, send me an instant messenger with the theme of your project. Send me an email acknowledging that you have read the syllabus and you abide by the terms. And make sure that you have all your working env development environment working. And you download that sample that I cover in last year's video lecture. You can run it and turn in a different version with a different query. Got that? 